right, P10F, Safari Land Low Drop, QLS Receiver Plate, a Light Balder Pro in black carbon fiber. Let's build it. So the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and add the extra blocking for suppressor height sights. I decided that I'm doing that on absolutely all of them. So to do that, I just go ahead and I use the medium sized blue tape and I just plop it down all the way down. All right. That's looking good. And all right. Next I'm going to do is just go ahead and do five layers of tape on this one. This is not modified. Um, it doesn't say it has suppressor height sights, but I like doing it. And as a holster manufacturer, it just kind of helps you with everything else uh, as a more of a guaranteed fit. So we're just going to go ahead. I'm not going to wrap this over the top of the slide. I'm going to line it up with the top of the slide. And we'll go ahead and do our O-Lite. O-Lite's going to be a couple different uh, blocking um, pieces for that. We're going to need, obviously, our round widgets. These guys. And we will need this. I will show you what this does um, shortly. So let's get our small tape. Throw this down. And I got a surprise in the works. I'm working out the bugs right now. Uh, we'll have a video on it when I am done. But... It involves my own version, and you will see that soon. If you're on my personal Facebook, uh, you uh, have already saw a sneak peek of it. So, and we're gonna throw this upside down, just like so. Square it up with that, and go ahead, and we will lock that in place, like so. And then we will tape the widget to that blocking. as well. That's one side done. And we'll move on to this side. This side is the easier of the two sides in my opinion. Go ahead and set this on here. We will square it up. And I'm going to go ahead, you know, I like to wrap it right in the middle. I'm going to do just this one for now, and that's going to hold everything in place. Go ahead and button it down. If you don't button it down, you're going to get tenting. And when you get tenting, what will happen is uh, you will get not that good uh, definition. So just keep that in mind. That's the reason why I tuck everything down in so we get that crisp, crisp look. All right. Now, so uh, let's see here. I'm going to need a couple of these. This is just PCB cut off, so you can use anything, popsicle sticks, whatever you can get your hands on. I just like using these because they're readily available to me. Now, we are going to have to block out that laser. And to block that out, I took this half-inch dowel, and I just cut a little section here. This goes against the trigger guard, and that goes right here. But if you notice, that pushes in. We don't want that. So... It looks like two of these, and it might be good. So I'm just going to stick that in there, and I'll stick another one in there. We'll see. Actually, just do that, and we'll see how that looks. That looks perfect. So that is stuck where it is. there. I'm going to tuck that 
tuck that down. Wrap it pretty tight. Get that down. And that's that. Next, we're going to go ahead and put that on there. So I'll just stand this up, throw this down, and I like to just do that right there. Just make that channel. It doesn't have to be super tight. And then at the very end, I like to go tight on that one. Right, nothing is on this side. I lied. So here's the uh, model of it. We got that right there, which is right here. So um, we'll tackle that at the end because this is going to have a speed lock on it, which means we need this blocking. And it's also gonna be Safari Land. So we're gonna need this blocking. And then the other end, which is, uh, where is it? Right there. So I'm gonna go ahead, grab a, a fork, and I'm gonna grab the hood. So many projects, so many projects. Good hand, right hand. Now, I have figured out after, God, hours of tooling with these things, because um, they come in batches, some are perfect, some suck, and they, they stick and they get stuck, I have found the solution to get them unstuck or to stop them from sticking. And I will show you that later on in the video. So if you previously have one and, uh, or if you have ordered one from me and it's sticking, um, the, I'll show you the fix. It involves a heat gun or a hair dryer, and I'll show you precisely where to just warm it up a tab and it's going to work for you. I promise. So let's, uh, let's line everything up. All right. So we're going to keep that in mind and we're going to flip over to this side because this side actually um there is uh, the same thing it's on the same side so we need to know uh where to throw this and this we're gonna put this right at the end of here which means this is gonna sit right here but we still need something right there so let's put that we could actually put that there or we can line this up and that blocks everything and then allows for blocking with this. And it gives it a little bit more, uh, how you say, uh, je ne sais quoi. All right, here we go. Throw that on there. We'll figure out where we want it. Bada bing. That looks pretty good. Uh, only problem is it's not. There we go, that's better. So I'm gonna take this off and we're gonna tape this here. Now it's okay that if you noticed that is sticking out right there, um, that adds rigidity. I'm gonna leave that because I'm gonna be okay with it. But you also know from watching this channel that I put a, a gusset in between the two. So I am not at all worried um, just verify. Yep, we're gonna go right there. And even though we're doing foam press, I like to poke the holes. Reason being, um, you can see the indents of the holes after you foam press so you know where to drill so you don't have to line this up and drill through it which is what I used to do um, before I drew the holes in that blocking All right now let's find this and we're gonna want this either right here or it's gonna sit on top of it we're gonna put it at least right here so that's gonna go right here which is not good because we have that, but we're also, this is gonna be our retention right here and so is that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna to have to move it over slightly. All right, so I'm actually gonna add a piece of blocking right here. 
and that is going to match this plane. So we're going to have that right there. And then I just need to add some blocking underneath here, which kind of looks like that right there would do the trick. Just check this out real quick. Yep, that's it. Slip that up just a hair. And then we are going to lock that in place. come over and we know that like I said do that other side and this will block that other side as well this blocking again you can find it at holstersmith.com it's like I don't know seven or eight bucks so it's not that bad so I try to buy minimum two of everything two is one one is none and we're gonna have to throw that on that's gonna be right there I just lined that up with the blocking on the other side and that's gonna go right there just like so and all we have to do because I've never I don't believe I've done this combo before so I don't think I'm gonna have a uh, retention plate so Right, that is all said to Mundo. Go ahead, we'll do our retention plate and then throw it in the press. And if you couldn't hear it, these presses are on, foam is underneath, they are nice and hot. So that is good. And then I got the other press on right here. That is also all set. And these are super hot right to the touch. So that's gonna be perfect for getting this Kydex deep in every crevice. So let's go ahead, make the retention plate and uh, finish this holster. I hope it comes out beautiful. It's a little thick on one side, uh, so um, we'll see how it goes. Now this is super duper tricky, so um, don't get lost. I'm just kidding. I like my Crocs, they're comfy and they breathe. Anyways, take your item, throw it in a healthy spot, trace around it, What do you know? There's your outline. And for the 1,000 people who always comment what's it made out of, it's quarter inch MDF at your local Home Depot or Lowell's. I buy two foot by four foot sections. Super easy. Take your time with this. You don't have to rush it. Cut on the inside of the lines with your scroll saw, making sure not to put any pressure on the blade because it will snap and then you gotta start all over again from a different point. But anyways, inside of the line and you will be all set. And straight from the scroll, looks like it adds up pretty good. A little bit of a gap right here, but honestly not too worried about it. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead, throw some tape on it and let's get it attached. Push it down as far as I can so you don't get that tenting going on. So rest it on it and tape up here. And now There. Mm -hmm. Some tape. 
tape here, and then I squeeze it from both sides at the same time. And you could even, you know, you could pretty much do whatever you want with it, as long as it doesn't move while it's in the press. All right. And there we are. I'm going to go ahead, cut the piece of black carbon, throw it in the press, and you're going to see it all, hopefully, formed perfectly. Mold is out, came out actually a lot better than I thought it was going to because it was so thick on one side. But if we look at it, besides the curve right here, but it looks perfectly in the center. So we got side one. And side two, you can see all the dimples are just perfect where we need to cut. And uh, I am really enjoying this. So um, let's see here. This is the mount side. You can see it lines up perfectly right here. So um, yeah, there's just a hint of retention right there, which is normally where our retention is. But this bezel is caved in right here. So that's going to be uh, where some retention is. Uh, and generally, I'm going to do, do three screws going down here. But let's cut this apart, make it a complete holster, make it all pretty, and go from there. And the next step a after taking the mold out, swapping it over to the blue gun, I'm going to go ahead and mark our boundaries. And I have learned that um, instead of marking like under the trigger guard, I'm like just outside of where it's going to go, because I could always take off more material. I can't add it. So, food for thought. I'll throw that right there. And this is going to come. So. Let's get this guy in here. And there's the blocking. And over here, we're gonna line that up in that. We're gonna do a raise. Just like that, let's drill it. And ladies and gentlemen, do not forget that when you are drilling out the accessories that you do not push that drill bit all the way through the second side because you will have to start over. And please don't forget, it is very important to make sure your holes are clean. Bazinga. And it is now time to see the holster take shape. As you can see, I'm cutting on the outside of the line. And what I like to do is I like to limit the amount that I actually cut. So if you notice in a couple spots, I don't go all the way through because the less material I cut, the longer that blade's going to last. And that's the way I like to do it. And don't forget, if you notice that I'm cutting that side of the holster with the safari land facing me, that way I don't cut into it. So at this point, I have the holster pretty much cut, all right? It's gonna be somewhat of the final shape, about 95% of it. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the mold, throw the mold in, and if you notice where I said I'd rather cut less off, right? My knuckles will scrape that, and we don't want that to happen. So what I'm gonna do is I'll come in, and I will follow where the trigger guard goes. Go little by little. And then I'll bring that off. So I'm going to go down and then I'll rub that in and then go that. I'm going to do that 
on the belt sander. And if you notice, I'm only going a little bit of a time. So I'm gonna go just a little, take it off, and then I'm gonna check the fitment with the blue gun or the mold. And as you can see right here, my knuckle still drags, so I'm gonna go ahead and lift this back up, and I'm gonna do a little bit more, and repeat the process until I am happy with it. And this is 220 grit sanding drum and all I'm doing is after the belt sander, I am cleaning up the edges to get it ready for the buffer, but the buffer is going to go on in a little bit later. So this is going to clean up all the edges here, especially where the RMR is and where we can't get that on the belt sander. Now it's time to make the gusset. So we're gonna grab our clear and I'm gonna mark the holes. Got to drill these. That's quarter inch. And we'll go ahead and drill these quarter inch. Gusset is now cut. Here it is right here. Here is where it's gonna go. We're gonna go ahead and throw this right here. Now uh, to get this to stick on here, we have to heat up this sight channel just slightly. I'm gonna bend it at 90 degrees, cool it down, and then I'm gonna go ahead and rivet this on. And then I gotta go ahead and cut these holes. So um, yeah, let's, let's do more work. This is what I mean by just folding it at a right angle. That gives me full access to go ahead and add these, and then I'll fold it back over this, and then cut these out. I'll show you how I do that. It's so poetic. Well, I guess my doggies are barking in the house, so since we uh, just did that, it's somewhat of a good stopping point. To... Oh, let's go check on him. Want to come outside? Want to come out? No? All right, all's good in the hood, so back to holster making. All right, I'm going to show you how to fix the sticky speed gear, or the Spetz gear speed locks. Uh, Took me a long time to figure out a little trick to smooth it up because every now and then, like you hear that it gets hung up just, just slightly. Uh, I'm gonna show you how to fix that. So as you know, what it gets stuck on is this piece right here. I feel like uh, it was pulled from the mold too soon or there's just too much tension on it. So what I personally do, is get your heat gun going. I got this about halfway up. It's not crazy. Uh, you don't want to, you know, melt the damn thing. Uh, but it's this piece right here. And all I'm going to do is just warm it up for a couple, you know, like five, six seconds. Pull it off. Just check it. Seems pretty good. And then cool it. do that again and then just get it to where it works for you Ooh, that felt good beautiful beautiful okay let that cool Another thing I do, you usually see me do it off camera, is I have a, apparently leaking, uh, bottle of REM oil here, and this is the only one on my bench that has all the straws, and I will go ahead and put them in between all the points that move. And just work it a little bit. Oh yeah. Cool. 
Now it's ready to install. And we got all of our hardware out. Go ahead, take our blue thread locker. And this is for the hood. And when you buy Safari Land products, if they don't have the uh, locking serrations on the uh, bottom of the head there, they have Loctite on them already. So uh, these are half inch posts. I trade out the crappy 3 16th posts. Throw that on. And remember, these are pretty much finger tight because if you go too tight, it's going to tighten down even further, clamp down further on the eyelets that hold it together. And then you have a non functioning hood, which sucks. Do a test. I let go. Beautiful. Okay. And then we'll move on to this one. That's quarter inch. That's, oh god, I don't even know what these are. 3 16ths maybe? Or 3 eighths, I mean. Uh, let's see here. And these are 0.4375. And with that on, I'm just going to check this real quick. And we can see it hits right here. So I'm going to go ahead and... Uh, take uh, the heat gun and just open that up just a little bit. All right, so as you can see, I wind it up just a little bit and that gives us the clearance, bam, right there. And it actually feels pretty good. Uh, you use the hood as a, yep, it just, it's clean. So before I go any further, I completely forgot to just do a quick wipe down, which is unlike me. Black carbon fiber is absolutely beautiful. All right, so we're gonna throw this back on. And what I absolutely love about Striker Fire is it's so easy for holsters when you're doing a hood because you don't have to worry about the holster or the hood hitting the, the hammer. All right, we're gonna go ahead and take our Noga RC2000. Clean the inside of the hole. And that's a quarter inch or, or three eighths that comes with it, or three sixteenths, I should say. Fold that over, throw that on there, and oh, I left my gun over there. Once you're spoiled using tools, you don't want to go back. There's that, and let's swap this out for this guy. clearance right there. Hell yeah. And do a final. Oh, beautiful. And that is a CZ P10F with Olight Balder Pro. All right, this holster is all set. It came out absolutely amazing. Uh, one thing I want to reiterate with all you guys, uh, I've said it in a couple videos, but missing tools here whenever you do a hood and this right here is uh you know you have it on there and you're actuating the hood a lot make sure you tighten it back up before you package it up with shipping because what happens is every time you articulate that hood it could actually rotate it and loosen it up for you and then it'll harden in a loose position and you don't want that because it's just going to jiggle so this holster is ready to go out like i said we are not going to articulate that anymore and it is absolutely beautiful. I am super stoked with how this came out. 
and this is heading all the way to Rome, Texas. So thank you guys for watching. I really appreciate it. A huge thank you to uh, HolsterSmith and KnifeGuess.com for proudly supporting this channel, and uh, I absolutely love them. I order from them multiple times a day to the point where I kind of feel bad because, of course, I take advantage of that free shipping that they offer on everything over $49 to the continental United States. But, like I said, I order, you know, like I, like recently this week, I think I had like six or seven orders for, you know, 200 here, 600 there, 500 here, and it's just over and over and over and over, and I just got boxes ready to burn. So, huge thank you to them for putting up with me, and I know I'm not the only one that does it, and it's, uh, it takes a special kind of people to be able to put up with people like me. So, huge thank you to Holzer Smith and Knife Kits, and uh, I appreciate all you guys. Uh, and if you didn't see it on the last video, the Canik MC9, the brand new compact meat by Canik, uh, I did order the Pale Horse mold with trim jigs, so that's going to be available for uh, holster building. I did put it up as a pre-sale, and I have a couple orders in for it already. As soon as it comes in, I am going to knock those out because they're going to be quick. So, if you are looking for the MC9, I will have that. Actually, it is on my website, and I will have that shortly until then i uh actually you know what i have a question for you if you start a holster at 10 o'clock at night it is currently 11 30 so i'm in the clear but let's say i finished at like 1201 is that a two-day holster or is that a three-hour holster questions up to you i'll leave you at that see you later love you bye okay i lied i'm not sorry uh there is a second part to this build that i completely forgot to do which is just the low drop so we're going to install the QLS receiver plate on the low drop. I will show you how I do that right now. A little bit of an oops moment. This is going, this particular holster is going with this low drop and with this, and we are gonna uh, put it together. So, um, big thing that you wanna remember is, well, first of all, there's no serrations on here, so there's no thread locker. So we're gonna go ahead, add some thread locker. Now so that's done. If you put the bolts in on this side, you will not, you, you'll have interference. The nuts go on this side. These are keeper nuts. They got the tabs in them. They go right in these holes, just like so. No need for uh, any suspension or anything like that. Again, we need the right, there we go. Throw that on there. And like my daddy always said, don't ever tighten up the first screw. Wait till all of them are in there and then go around and tighten them all. Thanks, daddy. I take that with me everywhere I go. All right. And the point of that is you could have any amount of receiver plates and all you need to do is slide and it locks in place and then to get it out squeeze right here while simultaneously pushing and then bam slides right out another option you can do is safari land sells a leg strap or you can get it on uh, amazon for like 17 bucks you throw it underneath this so you lift this up throw it underneath put it back on or you can put it well, actually you wouldn't want it on that because that's removable but put it right on there and that'll stop it from kind of wiggling on you but there is the finish holster. A few moments later. Okay, but seriously, that's a beautiful build. So, on that note, bye.